Yep, so they're doing that, but they're also doing like drone delivery as well. And I went there and I bought it and I was like, man, I got a steal. This is like crazy, 89% off. And I found out that's just a regular price everybody has it at. I, I really want our Walmart to grow. I want people to do well, Walmart. What about if I gave Walmart the same level of attention, so to say, that I gave Amazon to really figure out how the algorithm works, figure out the best practices. At the time, nobody was doing it on the platform. We have a very small percentage of sales at Walmart, like very small. And we've been investing quite heavily in the last, let's say, six months on Walmart. This is the Aaron Cordovez Show. All right, everybody. Uh, I have a guest today, Michael Lebhar, who is the founder, okay, of a Walmart agency. They help you get into Walmart online, do well, succeed, get into the stores. Not only is he an agency guy, but similar to myself, he also has his own brands he's invested in, which are doing over $10 million a year combined. Uh, so he's a massive seller on Amazon and on different stores, has products in retail, and is helping others get into Walmart stores. So, uh, Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, tell me, Michael, like, how old are you? I'm 24, turning 25 this month. Okay, so selling over $10 million, 24 years old. I mean, look, on my show, I got a lot of young people, man. So, so just last week, I had a guy on 19 years old already selling over $10 million. So, but that's like an anomaly, man. You're doing a freaking fantastic job. Uh, at 24, I was broke and had not much going for me. So tell me, how, how'd you get started in this industry and, and why, you know, kind of what's, what's your story there? Awesome. Yeah, so um, really early on in high school, I always did like random odd jobs. So like whether it was, you know, long morning, I lived in Canada for a little bit, whether it was like snow shoveling, um, I had a book binding business, whatever kind of I saw, I just got my hands my hands in um, and you know I'd always like being really busy I always like being really busy with just doing things um, and I moved to I moved I left LA for a little bit moved back to LA and when I moved back to LA um, there was this in my community there were these there were these brothers who were selling a lot online and I, I knew them I knew they were selling a lot online I didn't really know exactly what that meant um, or any details about it so I kind of just asked them like could you just teach me a little bit like what are you guys doing um, they were doing hundreds of million in revenue and what? Um, yeah, but like kids, not kids. These are like adults. Oh, they were they were old. They were in their twenties at the time. But okay, um, so old farts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? And they had they had like a really big. They brought me to their their warehouse. They had like a massive warehouse. I'm like, just teach me what you're doing. So they kind of got into it. Taught me a lot of you know. Hold on. Who are these people? Farts. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Who are these people? Are are they like on social media? Can you find them or or? Um, I, they're not really on social media, but they own a company called Our okay. Naturals. So okay, yeah, um, Our Naturals. I heard of them. I see them. They were big on hand sanitizers. No, exactly. is that Our yep. Naturals? Yeah. Anyway. Yep. There you go. Um, so before that, it was a lot of like um, a lot of auto accessories. Also, they have a brand, and they're doing a lot of like personal care products, so essential oils, things okay. like that. Really hard categories. They taught me a lot, um, and I, you know, I just got we got into it, and you know, at the time we were very into fitness. I, I worked a lot with my brother. And we were very into fitness. Um, so, you know, we went to a really rigorous school. So we only had a little bit of time. We would come home late at night, look into products, um, you know, found, you know, these workout gloves, which seemed pretty unique. So um, we launched those. Um, those did really well. And we kind of started getting the hang more of it. And I really fell in love with, like, the brand building process. And I mm -hmm. identified that, like, this Amazon really allowed me to build a brand. And, you know, as we grew the products and grew the sales, I got to invest much more money in building the brand. So instead of, you know, launching a bunch of random products, we started focusing a lot more on building a line, um, you know, doing bigger and better photo shoots for our products, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. um, creating much more assets around our brand, developing, investing in the social media behind it and things like that. Um, and I kind of really fell in love with that process. So we developed that, we grew that brand. Um, we started a couple other brands in similar um, spaces and then, we just expanded them to other platforms. I'm like, Amazon allowed me to build a strong catalog, these strong products, these unique products. Over the years, the products became better. You know, our marketing became better. So we expand them to a lot of other platforms and we started selling them on other marketplaces, other online retailers. Um, and, you know, at, around that same time, we came across a lot of issues with Amazon um, with one of our competitors, you know, really causing us a hard time. So when all that happened, a lot of more of our focus went 
into some of these other online retailers and other online platforms. So that's kind of how I got my wide range. What kind of what kind of competition was giving you trouble? Like what what? Give me some so specifics. A, yeah, so we had one seller at the time. who just like I think it was like a bot that was eating our PPC clicks. Um, so like whenever mm. we tried anything, like they were, they had this bot that would just constantly eat um, our PPC clicks. Um, and then we had um, one. I think it was the same seller, but somebody complaining about our products that like a bunch of different it was bad reviews, violations, things like that. Um, so we had a bunch of issues with that. Um, and then like all them uploading like you know bad reviews. Like there's just mm, so many mm, things mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. at the kind of same time. Um, and yeah, so that made it really difficult. Um, and it's like, it was, that business was everything for us. And we had one main product. It's part of the life of being an Amazon seller. I think over that time, once that happened, when we have one key product, that's when we really came to the realization that we really want to build our catalog and expand mm -hmm. our product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. And so then what happens next? Yeah. So from there, um, we really noticed that Walmart was picking up a lot. Um, out of all the online channels we were selling on, we were selling on Target, QVC, Groupon, like eBay. Uh, at, like we were selling on all the all the all the platforms, some online marketplaces and online retailers. And we saw Walmart was just bringing in on the most sales. So mm. I kind of took the approach. I'm like, what about if I gave Walmart the same level of attention, so to say, that I gave Amazon to really figure out how the algorithm works, figure out the best practices. At the time, nobody was doing it on the platform. The platform. Mm -hmm. didn't, you, you didn't really have, you, you couldn't just list your products. You have to work through an API partner where it was, it was, it was more complicated. So there's nobody was really putting an effort there. So I sat in, in there and I just really um, put a lot of effort figuring it out. Um, and we were able to grow our sales a ton there, become the best seller in, fit, in fitness in the category. Um, we started launching more products. We started launching bundles. We started um, really expanding our catalog. We've got into home and kitchen for a little bit, um, more like home accessories. Um, so like laundry baskets, things like that. Did it ever, did it ever pass your Amazon? Like did Walmart ever pass Amazon or what percentage of Amazon was Walmart? People often ask me, Hey, can I sit down with you one-on-one? -on -one? Let me pick your brain, get whatever info from you on how to sell on Amazon, how to get started. Well, guess what? You can sit one-on-one -on -one with me for more than three hours on my mini course, aaroncordovas.com slash start. And I will sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and give you all the info that I think you need to get started on Amazon. If you're having success on Amazon, you probably have cash to invest, right? The next level after making it big on money is investing. You have to be able to invest to get really wealthy. I've created a fund where you can put your money into Amazon brands and because e-commerce is growing, Amazon is growing and you have operators who know what they're doing, your chance of success on your investment is pretty high. I've created this fund because I do not want people to get burned and where I can put my own money alongside of your money to invest in the best brands that exist right now. Go to AaronCardovas.com slash invest if you want to find out more and you are an accredited investor. Yeah. So. For the fitness brand specifically, it passed um, Amazon um, mm, at one mm. point um, when our Amazon business was more down. Um, and um, yeah, so in, for a while, like it was 10 to 15% of our revenue, but then for the, fit, for the fitness brand, it became much larger. Um, like over COVID for the fitness brand alone, I think we did like $3 million just on Walmart, um, mm. just for the fitness brand, um, just on walmart.com. So, um, yeah, for that's a lot. Walmart. Yeah, for yeah. for Walmart. I mean, for Walmart, that I've that's a lot. <laughs> and the margins were so good because they were at that time there was almost no advertising, so mm. you wouldn't even you weren't even there was a little bit of placements, but it was it wasn't an efficient program. So um, the profit margins were really high uh, because of that as well. So what is what is the trick to Amazon? I mean, to Walmart. What is the trick to Walmart? Because we have a very small percentage of sales at Walmart, like very small. And we've been investing quite heavily in the last, let's say, six months on Walmart. And it's moving the needle a little bit. I mean, I think we doubled our sales. But again, it's, it's uh, nothing. I don't, I don't even know if we're at a 1% yet uh, on Walmart. Nothing significant. So what is the trick of actually getting Walmart going? Great question. So I, I look at Walmart as it's, it's a playbook that there's so many different things you could do. The more, there's some that you have to do 
And then there's a bunch that the more of them you do, the better position you're in, right? Mm -hmm. So for mm -hmm. us, it's really understanding your catalog setup to be optimized specifically for Walmart. So that goes for everything from what product type. The and I don't want to get into too much detail, but because it could go on forever. I want the oh, detail. No, no, I want the detail. Okay, so let's go into it. Perfect. So when you think about Walmart, it's in stages, right? So when you think about catalog setup, um, the first step is product type. So every product has a product type associated with it. The way Walmart algorithm works is there's a list of a bunch of queries associated to every product type. So okay. on Walmart, let's say there's for the product type of laundry baskets, there's another thousand keywords associated to that query. And if you're in the wrong product type, off or not the optimal product type, often a lot of the queries aren't associated to that product type. So no matter what you do, you're just not going to rank for it. So okay. you want to make sure you're in the wrong product type. Now, there's really three sections of category on Walmart. There's product type, category, and category path. Now, you're going to want to make sure you're in the right category and the category path. The category path is like the shelf of the product. So when you look on your Amazon, on your Walmart listing. Mm -hmm. Like the breadcrumb. Exactly. So... Um, you could open up a case to switch that with Walmart if you don't think it's in the right category path um, or not the optimal one, right? A lot of times things could fall into different ones or, or a lot of times, you know, in different seasons, you might want to be in different ones, right? So um, if you have a really large catalog, it makes it harder to manage things like this. But if you have a smaller catalog, there's things you could do on the category side of it. Then most importantly, the catalog setup. They want their content to be really different than Amazon, right? Because mm. it's going to help and how, them. How do you... People. Okay, but I've heard I've heard that a lot. How do you think they do it? Like, they you they do like a, a a differential, like a change from Amazon, and check the pixels are different, or like, how do they enforce that? Do you have any insight into what they actually do? Yep. So Walmart has uh, there's a couple ways they do it. So they have a it's a gamified system called Listing Quality Score, um, where basically every listing has a listing quality score associated to it, and you could check in your in your Walmart account, like what your listing quality score is. And listing quality score is broken up in three different sections. Um, so one is called content and discoverability, which is the most important one. Um, and then one is called reviews and rating and one is called offer, right? So content and discoverability is I think 70 something per percent made up of attributes. Um, so attributes are really important. Walmart is trying to um, organize their catalog a lot based on backend attributes in your listing, right? So there's so many, so many, so many fields but people aren't, don't fill out a lot of those attribute fields because they're like, oh, it doesn't really apply. But in truth, it helps you get indexed in a lot of categories much better. But the way they make sure that you don't do Amazon content is for the other percentage of the score, which is based on how they want their titles, bullets, and descriptions set up. And titles, for example, I think it's in different categories, it's different amounts, but it's approximately 75 characters, right? On Amazon, your titles are, you know, you 200, 250. Exactly, when you want to include more keywords. So Walmart will actually, you will lose points on your listing quality score if your title goes over that amount. Mm, okay, so we're, but, we're talking about content. It's mostly the text or what about the images? That's what I was more worried about. Like what if your images are the same? So images are fine. Um, they, they, um, you can use the same images as Amazon. Um, they're fine okay. with that. They just don't want their text to be um, the same as Amazon because Google will mainly crawl the, the text for a lot of these stuff and a lot of the traffic on Walmart comes from Google, right? So you have to realize Walmart has an extremely high domain authority. And I hear this all the time, like, oh, why would I, I don't want to sell on Walmart. There's a bunch of reasons why you might want to sell on Walmart, but one reason oftentimes is Walmart has a really high domain authority. Sometimes it'll even come up, be, up uh, above the, the Amazon one. Sometimes it's a little bit below and they'll click that. And then if you're not selling it, there's probably another seller selling it. So um, that's yep. probably showing up on Google and a lot of Walmart traffic comes from Google. They also invest a lot in Google ads. So a lot of the shopping ads for the products will actually come from Google. So they, they want it, they want it and helps them index better on Google if they have unique content. Um, so they, they enforce the, the tech side of it a lot more. They have something called, I, 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 so it's, they have like, I'd inspect 4.0 and now they have a new version it's called 5.0 where they're constantly updating, but Walmart has a style guide, it's called, for every single category. And some of them are 20 pages, some of them are 100 pages long, where they actually- 100 like, pages long? Yeah. For like, a title or for what? No, for, so it's for, for everything, right? So it covers okay. like what they want in their titles, descriptions, images. The images are much less than four, so they just want you to have, I think it's like seven or eight images, and they want it to be the specific size, which the Amazon size mainly works for it. So um, 
though in some categories it's a little different. Like in furniture, they want you, your product to be in the background for the main image, right? Mm. Um, in supplements, what, what they want is the main image to have next to it like a panel that has some information, um, some bullet oh. point sales information. Like on an Amazon, you do that. Like your listing could get taken you down. You get busted, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So like one interesting thing about Walmart is even though there's a core methodology of how it's run, there's still a buyer focused mentality where different buyers at Walmart own different shelves, so to say. And um, the buyer for, and the department of supplements has different things that they want. So they'll ask for different things in the department of furniture, for example, has, has, has different things that they request. So there is some caveats with sometimes the type of content in each of these different categories, but as a whole, a lot of the rules, you know, are across the board where it's like the type of titles they want. And what I always say is it's fine to lose some points in your listing quality score. If you do the rest of your content really well, you have, you fill out all your attributes, you're following the guidelines and your, your listing quality score is, you know, 95, but you realize your title's missing one really good keyword, right? Or you realize there's a misspelling that's really important. You could put that in and lose a couple points because the points isn't exactly correlated to SEO best practices, right? So mm-hmm. there, have, it's a lot about balancing SEO versus Walmart's preferences. So right? what's and the what's the ideal like quality score? Where sh- where do you need to be? So we did like a big study, and then um, there's another company we work with um, called White Spider that did a really big study, and they found that as long as you're over 85 percent. Um, you're good. Like uh, across most major categories, most major products, the products ranked in the top positions were above 85, but beyond 85, they, we didn't see a difference if it was 85 or 95 of where they were sh- showing. Now mm. the listing quality score um, is a lot to get ranked to the first four pages. Now, once you're in the first four pages, the rank from there to the top results is based on mainly on conversion rate. Right. So mm-hmm, Amazon's mm-hmm. a lot based on sales volume for Walmart. It's a lot based on conversion rate. So when you have a new listing, obviously it's much easier to have a really good conversion if you're sending really targeted traffic. Right. So you want to be mm. really careful. Right. So like, that's why I say it's all about stages, right? The first stage is make sure your cattle, your listings are structured really well. So they could index really well. They can index for as many keywords as possible, but also really high within, you know, all the way to spot 128, which is around that in four pages. Like you want to make sure it's there now from there to get to the top positions, you want to make sure you're focusing on conversion rate. Now, is it conversion rate by keyword? Conversion by rate keyword. by keyword because you yep. search whatever uh, lemon squeezer and you can send people directly to the detail page, you know, from Facebook, but that's not going to change your keyword conversion rate, right? Yeah, correct. But there, so we've been doing some studies on it and it turns out that there is some overall conversion rate impact on your listing as well, right? Okay. So if your overall listing conversion rate is low because you're running PPC and you're sending to a bunch of random keywords, right? Then it could hurt you in the beginning. At, at some point, it doesn't matter as much because your, your, your listing already holds a certain amount of rank and a certain amount of history. So like if you're sending to, you know, not high converting keywords, it's fine. But a big thing is going to be to actually make sure your conversions rate is really strong. So from spot 128 to get to the top, I always tell people like you have to focus on a few things, right? So it's like the impression to the click. What could you do on Walmart to get from impression to click, right? So you're going to want to make sure main image is really good, right? So Walmart isn't as strict. So you could put things in your main image that help you get that click. You want to take up as much of the white space, but you could add in different icons, whether it's you have value with the amount of servings you have, whether it's you want to call out different things, like get creative with it. Like that's one thing you could do. Reviews is going to be a big point of getting your clicks. One thing you could do with reviews is review syndication. Any reviews that you have on your website, you're able to move over to Walmart for free. What people don't understand, over 80% of the, all the reviews on walmart.com are syndicated reviews, meaning they're not from right. Walmart verified shopper. So there's that, but Walmart also has a program called, um, the, they have like a review accelerator program, which is similar to Vine. So there's different things you could do for, to get reviews, right? So you want to get that done. Next is promotional pricing is really important because when you put a promo update in, your price shows in green and it shows much bigger and it shows a cross off. So you could put like a higher MSRP. And you have to just, there's a flat file to upload promo pricing and you have to just do it every 180 days for the item. And then now your, your pricing looks more appealing, right? Now, quick question, quick question. So just a disclosure on that, guys, this is a, if you don't do this right, this could be a violation of the, I think it's the FTC or whatever. So you have to establish some sort of, I don't know what the exact vocabulary is, but just I'm telling you, check it out guys. But 
you have to have some sort of actual sales. It might be a significant volume or some amount of volume of sales at the price that you have the strike through. And I talk about this when I, you know, go to speaking things and th th things like that, because if you put, I, I got tricked by it before. I've seen it literally by Amazon itself. It was like, I remember I it was this uh, USB charger or whatever, like a, a, a bank cable thing. And they had it like normal price was like $55 and it's 90% off or something. You get it for, you know, eight bucks. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And I went there, it was, it was like a Twitter ad or something. Oh uh, no, it was a Twitter post from Amazon itself. And I went there and I bought it and I was like, man, I got a steal. This is like crazy, 80, 90% off. And I found out that's just a regular price everybody has it at. And this company never actually sold a product at $55. So, I mean, it's deceptive and it's also like, like borderline illegal depending on how you do it, it could be fully illegal. So just again, just caution you guys, you know, you're on my show and I'm saying like that stuff can be done, but typically what you want to do and, and what I a lot of times suggest, you could launch maybe at a very low price, right? And you're going to sell at a higher price. And then eventually you could bring it up or you could have a period of time where you're at a high price and then you do a real discount. Um, anyway, Amazon has changed your algorithm. Amazon is normally ahead of Walmart. And you no longer can do that. You have to put it in and they'll have to see sales at that higher price generally to put the strike through. So whatever, just as a side note, everybody. That's a good point. Yep. You're going to want to make sure. So like a lot of times, like on your website, a lot of times people sell it for higher. So if you were selling it for higher on your website yes. and then you could, um, you know, promo price it on Walmart. A lot of times when you're launching a Walmart, you might want to do a little pricing. So you're going to want to make sure about that. And then, um, you know, shipping times is going to play one of the biggest roles. Walmart has something mm. called WFS, which is equivalent to Amazon Prime. We were the first, the batch of the first 50 sellers within the WFS program oh, wow. when it was in beta. And now it's grown like crazy. They're adding in new warehouses every day. Um, the program has evolved a lot. Again, just like Amazon, they will, I see people a little frustrated. They will lose some shipments. There will be some things. And that happens with Amazon too. At our agency, we actually have like the only Walmart reimbursement tool where we actually plug into Walmart and we help monitor WFS shipments. And oh, wow, okay. But we've seen WFS to be very similar, you know, in, re in regards to like what they lose and to Amazon in most cases. So it works really well. Um, and that's going to be the biggest impact you will see. Um, it used to be that like all the searches, all the top searches, you wouldn't, they wouldn't correlate at all to like a lot of those items were empty WFS. Now for most categories, in some categories are different, like, expensive like really over large items like furniture and things like that it'll be different but in most sure. categories we'll see all the top items are wfs so mm. not, not only it's a great program walmart clearly says they'll increase your rank if you're in wfs like wow. on amazon it's kind of like everybody knows that 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 that, that happens and it'll improve but on walmart not only it'll increase your conversion rate which will increase your rank walmart clearly says they'll rank you higher with that so quick question do you know do you know if they're making their own fleet like amazon you know, their own trucks and their own stuff. Are they doing that, Walmart? Yep, so they're doing that, but they're also doing, like, drone delivery as well. Like, Walmart already um, launched some of their own drone delivery in Arkansas, like, which is their headquarters. You can even see, like, they have, like, the Walmart Museum, and you can see some information on it and things. So they're very, they just launched, like, a, a fully autonomous um, a warehouse. Like, they're very advanced with this stuff, and that's why wow. they're the only real competition to Amazon because they have the infrastructure to invest in things like this. And you know, leverage their stores as, you know, many distribution centers. Um, their pickup and delivery program is really big. That plays a really big thing, you know, shipping times and how they're able okay. to address that. Um, and that's why a lot of customers, you know, they're, they're, it's called Walmart. It's called WFS on the seller end. On the customer end, it's called Walmart Plus. And the Walmart mm -hmm. Plus program has been growing a lot because of that. So, Okay, and what about, what, what about price? Because, okay, we're talking about catalog, right? Make it attractive. You, you got to get the reviews. What about price? Because Walmart typically, you know, stands for low prices, right? I know they have a, a thing with, you know, Amazon, comparing it to Amazon prices, but how important is the pricing for, you know, Walmart compared to, let's say, Amazon? So one important, really important thing to note is that you're going to want to be equal to your Walmart, Amazon price, because if you're lower on Walmart, then your, your Amazon buy box can get taken away and vice versa, right? So you're going to be want to be um, equal to that. Now, depending on the category and the keywords you're targeting, premium products do sell really well, right? And it mm. just, it depends on the category and how you're targeting and how you're positioning your product. So if you have a product that's a little bit more expensive than your competitors, obviously you're at somewhat of a disadvantage, but you could really, you could make up for it in your content, right? On your listing, right? There's a lot of ways how you could, you know, tell your product story. 
um, and you know get that sale even though you are more and you know we have clients that have more expensive products and are able to do really well it just really depends on the customer you're targeting and how you're telling your product story so on Walmart there's a lot you could do with enhanced content and that's why I always say like if you have a more expensive product help the customer justify why it's more expensive okay okay fine so it's you know you don't see what do you see like in the categories if you convert to Amazon does Walmart actually have lower prices or no um, so the reason why in a lot of categories pricing will be an issue is if it's an in-store item right so mm. that's the only in general I see most categories you'll see a lot of the same um, but when you have in-store items those are going to be lower price so then it becomes a little mm. difficult right if you have selling a vitamin C then Walmart has a vitamin C that's in store and then it's going to show the pickup and delivery price, which doesn't have any, it has a lower price, but also doesn't have any shipping incorporated and things like that. And that's why people get really frustrated about Walmart that they like prioritize one piece sellers, um, which is their first party sellers. But that's just the name of the game. Walmart is majority of one piece um, business um, now and they're moving much more into marketplace. And to be honest, marketplace is getting much more advantages than one piece. It's growing really quickly. Most of the efforts and Walmart's putting into new programs is for marketplace sellers. One piece sellers still have an advantage that those items, a lot of times the first items, they get pinned. So a buyer in Walmart could choose to pin an item. So they could be like, oh, if, if they have it, they pin it if it's a one P, like if they're buying it or they can pin anything. They can pin anything, but most of the items they'll pin will be one P because they're, those are higher volume products. That's a lot of power, man. That's yeah, a lot of power. Yeah, Yo, I'm going to put this product at the top. That's but, you might want to have a good relationship <laughs> with your account manager and your Sam, just your account manager or the buyer of your category because they could do things like that. But, you know, you could usually it's the first 10 items. Sometimes it's less than that. So, like, you know, you organically could outrank a lot of these other items. And it's ridiculous. We have a client that does 500000 a day on Walmart.com sales alone. And it's like those are. What? Yeah. And that's nuts. But that's because that's 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 pick up in store. So, um, um, so are they selling trampolines? What are they selling so trampolines? Like, what? Enough, <laughs> interestingly enough, around three hundred fifty thousand of that is just dropship vendor items, um, and the other hundred fifty thousand is in-store items because um, they only have like a hundred items that are in that are in-store, and then the the rest of the catalog is all dropship vendor. But those items are they have relationships with the buyers, and they they're, they're showing in a lot of the top results. They have all, all across really big categories, um, and they have recognized brand. So. But people don't realize, like, some of these categories, like, they could do those amount of sales. And, like, it's just you're not winning those sales, you know? Mm. And you, But you could do a lot to win those sales because those vendors are struggling a lot now because Walmart has been putting so much more focus. It used to be all just based on your buyer relationship. Now Walmart's putting so much more focus on Walmart Connect, which is their advertising and their ranking algorithms. So you could outrank these companies who have 50,000 employees but don't have the time or the resources to like understand how algorithms work and how you know the search and grid game works. Hmm, interesting. Now, what about this getting into store? Because I've talked, we've had actually line review with Walmart, and they told us, listen, you need to have more sales on marketplace, but we want to buy for marketplace. Like they're trying to get us to do this one P thing, and I was saying, listen, you could see our sales there on three P. What's the big deal? And we kind of honestly, it, it didn't go so hot that, that, that talk and we're still talking with them and, and we're making that relationship better. But like, do you need to be in the one P drop ship for com to get into store or is that the majority or how, how does that whole relationship work? Great question. So it used to be, yes, well, not, it didn't used to be, it just used to be much better now. Um, it's not like that. Now, first of all, there's a few different sections of one P of, selling on Walmart. There's marketplace, right? And you can do marketplace fulfilling yourself or WFS. Then within the one P ecosystem, there's dropship vendor, which used to be really, really big. They don't want sellers doing dropship as much anymore. It's better for you to be one, um, three P mark marketplace WFS than be um, DSV. They don't want, um, um, a lot of sellers to be on the DSV program. Now you have walmart.com owned items, right? So where Walmart mm -hmm. buys them from you, ships them themselves. Sometimes those items are in store. Sometimes they're not in store. Now, You'll likely do more volume if it's a walmart.com owned product on .com because the buyer is more involved in that item. They'll include it in more promotions. They'll rank it higher. But as long as you're in Marketplace, you're good. So this brand that, we, that I have here that I'm a co-founder of, it's called 2x4. We were just on Marketplace. 
and we got into Walmart stores nationwide within our first year in business because um, we, we were on Marketplace, we did well on Marketplace, we were ranking well on Marketplace. The buyer understands that their mm. in-store sales are, are astronomically more than obviously their dot-com sales for a lot of these categories, but just is showing the buyer that you convert at Marketplace. Customers are happy with your products when they buy them on the Marketplace. You mm. as a vendor are putting in effort and respect into their Marketplace platform, shipping orders on time, you know, and it, it starts some sort of working relationship with Walmart. The biggest thing for Walmart is they want to take on new brands, but every time they take on a new brand, it's a risk, right? They have to, um, they're opening up shelf space for you, right? When they clear up that shelf space, it's a lot of money that shelf space is worth. Now they're putting mm-hmm. you in there. They have to know that you're going to ship on time, ship orders in full, be reliable, give good. So at, the more, the more you show that you're, you're capable of that and that you're ready putting effort into that, the better it is. And that's why um, marketplace is so important. People are like, oh, but it's making so little sales. If your goal is in store, then it's a really big thing. Obviously, you know, it, you can't expect sometimes your Amazon numbers, but a lot of times you have people who have like really competitive products on Amazon, they don't perform because they're not the leader in that. But mm. uh, but on Walmart, they could become the leader in it easily. So, mm. you know, we have a lot of instances like that and that's where that makes a thing. And So for a person that's zero, um, zero Walmart, and let's say on, on Amazon, they're selling 5 million a year or 10 million a year. And you're saying, hey, let me take them on. Or maybe they're doing no, almost nothing on Walmart, right? Like uh, half of 1%. Yep. What is your go-to market plan? Okay, I mean, we've, we've talked a little bit about it, right? Make sure that product type is good. Make sure your rate rating is over 85% on all the products or 85 points. Uh, get some different SEO Anything else? Like, what, what, what's the game plan? And also, sorry, game plan and also what can they expect in terms of percentage of sales? Great question. So um, game plan, you're going to want to make sure you're leveraging Walmart Connect, which is their advertising company, efficiently. Similar to Amazon PPC, there's some main core differences, but if you understand Amazon PPC, you can understand Walmart Connect. Um, we're able to have really, really good performance there. Um, a lot of times, you, that's where it makes a really big difference and why I put so much emphasis in the catalog you're relevant, there's a relevancy score associated to your product. And in order for you to advertise efficiently, your product has to be set up well. And the better your product is set up, the more efficient your advertising spend could be on Walmart because Walmart will rank your product on their, within their advertising company, how well you can advertise it. So, um, you know, advertising, you get your product ranked really well. Um, you could have, you know, really profitable ROAS pretty quickly if you're bidding on the right keywords. Um, there's a lot of keywords that you're not going to have competition with and you're going to pay minimum CPCs. Um, so a lot of opportunity there to get your products ranked. Primarily, you're going to want to focus on the fundamentals and then leverage Walmart advertising. And those are so tied together, um, in my opinion, more so than Amazon. Um, the performance mm. of your of your PPC is so tied to back-end structure of your listing and back-end relevancy of your listing. Otherwise, Walmart won't give you the good placements, won't give you the right placements, even if you put crazy CPCs. So that's one key thing. For percentage, I'll say this. If you have a decent sized catalog and are in pretty general products, right? Not like extremely niche products, just because those don't have volume on Walmart, then you we like to see anywhere from an eight to 15% of your Amazon sales. But, that'll be know, massive, by the way. That way, that'll be massive for us. So we'd have to do, you know, minimum $8 million, right? Of like to get to that 10% mark, right? I mean, that would be, that'll be massive. I mean, that would be like, now, we're nowhere near that, right? Nowhere near that on Walmart, but I don't know, man. I need a, a, an audit. And we even, we brought in, by the way, I actually hired a, a competition of yours probably a few months ago that I met at a SellerCon. And, uh, I mean, our sales have gone up. I think they doubled or tripled or something, but we're still at nothing. We're still not even 2%. Um, yep. We're so, anyway. See what there is there. But that's, so what's really cool about something like that is if you get those percentages, then you're pretty much locked into getting into store because then you're in front of the buyer's face every single day. They're seeing your products advertising well, mm. in top performance. They're seeing it everywhere. That's how we got in. And it's like the buyer knew us before even our meeting, mm. right? We're there. And that's how, you know, um, you know, you really kind of do that. I just came back from Vanderbilt. I go there all the time um, from their headquarters. And that's, that's how you get in front of them. You get in front of the buyer and then they're more interested in meeting you and, then they have more faith in you as a brand and as a company because, and that's how, you know, a lot of brands get in. My, my business partner got into Walmart stores nationwide because of really, really strong Amazon performance. 
Um, and they took him into all stores right away, which is very rare. That and didn't happen to us. I mean, we we crushed on Amazon, and they weren't so interested. But it, we're more neat. And, I mean, it's kind of niche, right? Our products are not really niche. But our best sellers, some of them, like a silicone utensil rest, for example, you don't really see a lot of that in the store. It's kind of like a little bit of a niche. The milk frother, that's a new trending item. They've never seen that sell in stores because it's so new. So I feel like we're we're fighting for one space when our volume is so massive on Amazon, but in the store, it has like this much of a spot, you know? That's so I great, don't know. That's a great point yeah, though, but this is what people don't understand. Like the way we got into Walmart stores is they originally came to us um, and gave us a meeting for our, for the products that we had, which were at CVS and were online. Um, and we, when we got the invite for the meeting, we realized that even if they would give us the space, it wouldn't do well. And they probably wouldn't give us the space. Why, like this was our product before it was even the box was wider and we realized like this retails for $30 or this one's $35 or something. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, you know, it, people are on it. It needs education. The, the, the packaging's pretty big. They're not going to get shelf space or something like this. It just won't perform mm -hmm. well. so before our meeting. We created a new prototype of our product that's size much smaller. Um, that could fit better on the shelf. We realized that they have, you know, they have pushers in our, in our category. So we wanted products that fit well on pushers. Um, we realized the price point of that catalog. So we made this, product at 9.95 dollars 9 Wow. Um, a much smaller serving size, a, a bunch of different things. And when we came to the buyer, like this fits into your cat catalog. And we just made a prototype of it. You know, they give you a bunch of time until you actually have to fulfill. And then they're ordering hundreds of thousands of units if it's a big product, a successful product. So you're able to, you know, um, accommodate to that type of stuff. So you're, you want to, you want to show the buyer that there is interest because of something that you've done, because your product has certain interest, but it could still be that the packaging you show them in the regular packaging and they just can't really, they don't really see exactly how it mm -hmm. fit into their shop. But now you change the perception of what your product is. But because you're selling really well on Amazon, you have proof of concept, even if it's in a little bit of a different format. So there's ways to kind of address that. Um, and you want to tell us, there's so many people trying to get into stores and, you know, it's the highest volume retailer in the world. In my opinion, it's one of the only retailers that you could really go into and be profitable on. They don't charge slotting fees and a lot of items like that. So you're going to want to make sure that you do everything and check off as many boxes as you can to give yourself that chance. So a metal piece, like on the metal yeah, thing, no, on you a metal piece on a metal really? piece, wow. plastic wow. pushers and then a the whole thing. So you're going to want to kind of get creative with it and do everything that your competitors probably aren't, you know? Wow. I like that metal shelf. Tell me where you bought that. You bought it on Amazon. So no, so there's a rapid, <laughs> there's a prototype company based in Arkansas um and you could do you could they actually could help you make prototypes and like when we pitched walmart we didn't have boxes this size or bottles like this they made us boxes and bottles that were this size and we just have to show them one and do you know the name of that company just to share uh, with anybody needs it rapid prototypes rapid prototypes okay so yep. check them out uh yep. should be should be good i know these places are not cheap but they're fast and when you need it you know right. what i mean so 24 hours for a lot of stuff wow that's amazing Okay, yep. sweet, dude. So, man, I, I, I think getting into Walmart stores can be a big game changer. Uh, have you seen anyone else? Like, now you're in Walmart. Does anybody notice you from any other place, right? Like, any other store might take notice, like a Costco or, like, a, I don't know, Kohl's or something. Or, or, or is that a whole different ballgame? Is there any correlation at all? It's the biggest correlation. Um, when we had a lot of discussions originally, it was all, it's always, what retailers are you in and is there any proof of con um proof of concept mm. um it was always those conversations and we were new brand and we had conversations with a lot of retailers we're like we're new we're just starting to like once you have some traction let us know then once we had gone into walmart we're like we're in walmart everybody's interested now some of them mm. aren't interested in taking you on right away some want to see how you perform at walmart but walmart retailers work based on iri data and it's basically like the helium 10 for in-store data let's say right it's like how you see iri as i say that again iri, IRI data yeah. And who, who, who gives that data? Where is that provided? So you have to buy it. Like I, um, there's a company called Nielsen that has a lot of the data. And there's different um, data sources. You could buy a lot of data. Um, I think you go on an IRI site, you could buy a lot of the data. It's kind of expensive. But the way the retail, that's how retailers could actually see mm. what brands are sell they're selling at different stores. So they could see like, if you're in a meeting with Walgreens, they're going to look how you're selling at CVS if you're in CVS. And then they could have a lot of insight into that. So um, even if you're selling well, you don't even have to reach out to the buyers. They'll see you pop up on trends within sales and then they'll reach out to you. 
Um, but they well, don't do the same thing for Amazon or e-commerce because they're not tracking that. So, um, of course. so that's why it's important for that. And then, yeah, the conversations with Target become easier, conversations with Kroger, whatever the retailers you're interested in. That's amazing. Okay, Suman, so look, if uh, someone wants to learn more about Walmart specifically, uh, where do they find out more, you know, from you, from any, any course you might have, any other podcasts you got? Like, how does someone learn and deep dive into Walmart? Awesome. So, number one, you could always email me for any questions. Michael at sellcord.com, S-E-L-L-C-O-R-D. We're Walmart approved partners. We work very closely with them. We're one of their approved marketplace partners. Um, and we work very closely with them. So if you have any questions or anything you need, might, might need assistance with, you can always email me. I'm there. You can fill out a form on our site, sellcord.com. For content, um, there's some podcasts I've done. Um, there's also, I did a course with Helium 10, Freedom, um, a Freedom Ticket Helium 10 course that has some um, entry-level information on Walmart. Um, but yeah, you can just reach out to me. I can send you some content or I can answer any specific questions. Um, also on LinkedIn, et cetera. So um, yeah, if you have any questions about Walmart, Marketplace, in-store, um, you know, some of our um, programs um, we're launching are a, Walmart, a pretty cool Walmart profit and sales tracking tool. So you, you, there's, there's some cool resources coming out from us and there's always cool resources coming out from us. Um, so just in regards to Walmart, whether it's just content or information or, or products. So you can reach out to us. Um, we manage over 400 brands on Walmart, over 100,000 products everywhere from the largest brands to brand new brands that are coming to stores. There's just different approaches for each of those brands. And it's very important that it's a very tailored approach for how, who your brand is, what your products are, how to address Walmart. And there's very different strategies and tactics to leverage based on what your goals are with Walmart, but also what type of brand and product you are. Awesome, brother. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast. And uh, dude, it's been good having you. I, I really want our Walmart to grow. I want people to do well in Walmart because competition is good for Amazon. And I'll tell you, at some point, I think this buy box suppression thing is going to have to go. You know, yeah. what, I, I think when that hits Congress or something, because out of all the practices that Amazon does, most of them are actually good for the customer. But this yeah. is like, you can't, someone cannot save money on Walmart. They will not let you, right? So I hope that something happens. Maybe, you know, Andy Jassy says, you know what? We're going to go for the... We're going to just go the long route for the customer and we're going to let people buy cheaper elsewhere, but we're going to have the best fulfillment. That'll never happen, dude, but I'm, I'm crossing my fingers one day it will. Uh, hope. It's, good, <laughs> it's good to hope. And uh, anyway, man, good talking to you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.